What is going on everyone? My name is Andy and today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the Raspberry Pi which is the device that you're looking at on the screen and uh, one of the really cool things you could do with it. So yeah, this is a Raspberry Pi. It's uh, it's like a credit card sized computer that has everything laid out onto a single board. Um, it was made as an inexpensive way to teach computer science and programming and stuff like that. And it actually runs on Linux which means you could download one of the thousands of distributions for that operating system and pop it on a memory card and load it right up onto the Raspberry Pi. Um, the specific distribution we're going to be talking about today is called RetroPie, which turns your Raspberry Pi into a pocket-sized emulator and you can use to play like thousands of classic games if you have the ROMs for them. Um, I'm just going to run through what you're going to need to do that and then we're going to go through the steps. And It might get a little complicated because command lines and everything like that if you're not too familiar, but it shouldn't be too bad. You should be able to follow along. Okay, for this project you will need a Raspberry Pi, obviously. Um, a micro SD memory card, I recommend at least 8 gigs because classic games, they really aren't that big, but if you have a lot of them, they add up pretty quickly. Um, a card reader, if your computer can't read a micro SD card. An HDMI cable, a keyboard, an internet connection. I'm using an Ethernet cable, but if you have like wireless dongles, you could use those. They're compatible with the Raspberry Pi. And two programs, Win32 Disk Imager, or any kind of like image writer and WinSCP, which you can download for free at winscp.net. Okay, so moving on to the actual steps. Uh, the first thing you need to do is actually download the distribution itself. So it can be found at petrockblock.com. You can either search RetroPie downloads or it's like under one of the drop down menus right on the main screen. Um, and on the download page, it's labeled a RetroPie SD card image. And there's two versions of this, but I saw that the first image, like uh, version one or whatever, was. Uh, updated more recently, so I just went with that. So after you have this download, you could go ahead and put your micro SD card into the reader and then plug that right into your computer so you could mount the image to it. Uh, remember, this is just like you're mounting to a disc, so it's not like you're dragging and dropping, you're physically writing the image to the card. So uh, you might have to format beforehand, but just then go ahead and uh, open up Win32 Disk Imager or whatever you have, follow the steps, and you'll be able to write it right to it. So after you have everything written to the card, you could take that out and put it in the Pi and turn it on. But make sure you have a keyboard plugged in and an Ethernet cable too, so you have an internet connection. So after you turn it on with the card in it, you'll see some script run on the screen, and then we brought into like the main hub of the Retro Pi, which is called the Emulation Station. Um, you'll actually see that you have a couple of games on it already, like Duke Nukem and Quake. But what we're going to do next is going to make sure you can put whatever you want on it within the limits of the Raspberry Pi itself. So go ahead and hit F4 on the keyboard and you'll exit the emulation station and uh, you'll be brought to the command line. So this is where we're going to do like the bulk of our work to really get this thing running. So the first thing you want to do is get some information that we're going to need in a little bit. So type in ifconfig and you'll see that the Pi's IP address will come on the screen. So go ahead and write that down because you're going to need that later on when you're actually putting games onto the Pi. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is mess with a couple settings in order to get the Pi to run to the best of its abilities. So in the command line, you're going to want to type in sudo space raspi hyphen config. And this is going to bring you to a menu. So you're going to want to select the expand file systems option. And it's basically just going to resize the partition of the Pi and it'll tell you it'll be resized on the next reboot. So you'll hit OK and go back to the menu that you were in. Go down to advanced options and hit enter. You'll be brought to a different menu. Uh, you'll see memory split, so hit enter on that, select that, and you'll see something like 63 or 64. Delete that and type in 512 and hit enter. Um, after that, you'll be back at the menu. Go down to overclock and a warning screen might pop up. Just hit OK a couple times to get through that. So the way that I learned this was to select the Pi 2 option, but after I got done with everything and started playing games, my game started freezing a lot and... Uh, I wasn't really sure why, so I tried changing the overclock from Pi 2 to high, and it seemed to work a lot better, and then I even just changed it to medium, and it still didn't seem to freeze, so I would select either medium or high, you should be fine. Okay, so after that, you'll be back in the menu, just go and select finish, and you'll be asked to reboot, and go ahead and do that. Okay, so after you reboot, make your way back to the terminal, because we have to write some commands to actually get some updates for the Pi. And to save everyone a lot of confusion trying to explain what all of these commands do, I'm just going to run through them in the order that you have to do them. So first you're going to want to type sudo space apt hyphen get space update. And after a couple seconds, you're going to want to type in sudo space apt hyphen get 
space upgrade space hyphen y space g i t. I would say git, but it sounds a lot like get, which you also use in the command. So after another few seconds, um, you're going to want to type in sudo space apt hyphen get space install space hyphen y space git space dialog. Okay, so this next command you might not need. I needed it a few months ago when I did this for the first time, but it looks like they updated RetroPie in that the time between then and now. And uh, they changed a couple things, and they might have taken it out because I put, or they might have taken out the need for it because I put in the command and it said that the directories already existed. And I'm using a new memory card this time around. So unless they're um, writing these to the Pi itself instead of the memory card, which they might be doing, I'm not sure, uh, you might not need this, but just to be safe, I'm going to tell you guys what the command is, and you guys can put it in, see if anything's different for you. Uh, the command is cd, hit enter. This is a mouthful. Um, git space clone space hyphen hyphen depth equals zero space git colon slash slash github, that's g-i-t-h-u-b dot com slash pet rock blog slash retro pi hyphen setup dot g-i-t and make sure you follow the capitalizations like to a t because with terminal commands on the retro pi or raspberry pi at least they're really important um so like i said that's a mouthful but you might not even need it i don't know you could you might because it might be different for me because i did this already um Okay, and the last important command that we're going to need to get everything going uh, is cd space retropy hyphen setup, press enter, chmod space plus x space retropy underscore setup dot sh, press enter again, sudo space period slash retropy underscore setup dot sh and make sure once again you follow the capitalization like the letters and everything like that and you should be good okay so after you put in that last command it'll bring you to another menu just select the first option titled binaries based installation and then hit enter for any screens that might pop up afterwards until you see the script running up on the screen um this is where like the meat of the retro pie is actually installing you might see words like atari and n64 uh, start running up the script this is like the Raspberry Pi is actually building the directories so you can put ROMs in them and actually get to the playing the games that you're working towards. Um, it might take a little while, probably around like 15 minutes, but it'll be worth it. We're almost done. Okay, so after that's done installing, you'll be back at a menu. The last thing we want to do is set up the emulation station to work without a keyboard in case you want to use like a USB gamepad or something like that. Uh, so just select setup and then on the next screen select auto start emulation station and then finally start emulation station on boot. It's really, really simple. After that, just keep hitting cancel and you'll be back at the terminal. Okay, so at this point, all you need to do is log out, which is just Alt and F4, but I found that after doing all that setup through the menus and everything like that, the RetroPie doesn't really want to cooperate, and the easiest way to do it is from emulation station. So you could type in emulation station, all one word, and hit enter, uh, but even then I've had some issues just trying to just trying to log out of the terminal. So usually I just do a full reboot and unplug the Pi and then plug it back in. Go to Emulation Station and hit Alt and F4 twice. The first time will bring you back to the terminal and the second time will log you out. Okay, so leave your Pi just like that with an Ethernet cable plugged in. You shouldn't have took an out for anything, but just make sure it's still in there because you need an internet connection. So um, go to your computer where I'm assuming that you have the ROMs that you want to play because now we're going to put them onto the Pi from our computer. You guys remember that WinSCP program that I mentioned at the start of the video, now we're going to actually go in and use it. Basically, what this program does is it connects to devices directly through their IP address, and doing this you'll be able to transfer all the ROMs over to your Pi while it's running, if it's connected to the internet. So after opening the program, select SCP from the drop down box at the top. Um, then you're going to want to enter the IP address for the Pi that you wrote down earlier. And the uh, the port number should be fine. It's usually around 22 or 21. That it's fine though. Um, and the 
Login and password. By default, the login is always going to be PI, P-I, and the password is going to be Raspberry, all under case. This is going to be the same when you log back in later on from your Raspberry Pi itself. After you've entered all the information, click login and you'll be brought to this window that has two screens. The left side of the screen is everything that's on your computer and the right side of the screen is what's on the Raspberry Pi. So go to the folder on your computer that has the ROMs in it that you want to copy over and then on the Pi side, click the Retro Pi folder and inside of that, click the ROM folder. And here you're going to see all the directories that the Pi was building when you did that binary install. So for this video, I'm going to be copying over ROMs for the Super Nintendo, so I'm going to go down to the SNES folder, and then I'm going to go back to the left side, just select all the ROMs, drag them, drop them over to the right side. It's literally, it's that simple. Uh, then just wait for everything to transfer, and hit X to terminate when you're done. Then you're done. Just go back over to your Raspberry Pi and log in using the same login that you used for the SCP program. Uh, when you're brought back into the emulation station, you'll see that there's a new slot for whatever ROMs that you put in. So there's like a new slot for the Super Nintendo here. Uh, even though that the Pi has all of the directories built in, it doesn't actually show them on the emulation station unless there's something in them. So it keeps it nice and organized, which is really nice. So that is it guys. You guys did a lot of work, a lot of commands and installs and everything like that. Uh, so go feel free to finally play some games. Uh, I hope I was able to shed some light on this neat little computer, show you guys one of my favorite things you could do. You could do a lot more than this but you have to admit this is pretty neat it's pretty cool um that's about it though enjoy it thanks for watching